The Chevrolet Impala, the legendary flagship of the Chevrolet lineup since 1958, and since its introduction in 1957 for the 58 model year, has always been a rear-wheel drive car. All in all, the Impala nameplate has been around for 10 generations, with this video concentrating on Generation 8. In 1996, the Impala nameplate, as we knew it, was discontinued. The large body-on-frame rear-drive Caprice-based performance car was gone. Fast forward to 1999 for the 2000 model year, and the Impala nameplate returns, but with two major changes. It is a V6 powered only, and comes in front wheel drive, not to mention, it's a unibody full size family car. Does this make the 2000 to 2005 Impala a bad car? No, not necessarily. In fact, it did exactly what it was designed to do, transport families safely and comfortably, much to the chagrin of the V8 rear drive purist. Our high mid 2005 Chevrolet Impala represents the final run for the 8th generation W body cars and was produced at the Oshawa Car Assembly Plant in Ontario, Canada. Replacing the aging Lumina, the Impala was available in three trims, our base, the LS, and the supercharged SS. Painted in sandstone metallic, our 1SB package car features a neutral sport cloth interior. It's when new pricing is shown to the left and a full options list is in the description box below. While the purists pine for the Impala to be rear-wheel drive, sadly this is not the case. Our Impala is indeed front-wheel drive, with its motivation coming from a somewhat timid 3.4-liter 3400 series overhead valve pushrod V6 engine. This engine is part of the LA1 E-Code 60-degree high-value engine family and is of iron block and aluminum head construction with sequential multi-port fuel injection and a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio. It creates 180 horsepower at 5,200 RPM, 205 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. Performance estimates are 0 to 60 miles per hour in 9.1 seconds with 0 to 100 miles per hour in 23.8 seconds. Quarter mile can be reached in 16.8 seconds at 85 miles per hour with its top speed electronically limited to 110 miles per hour. Equipped with a 17 U.S. gallon fuel capacity, this Impala consumes 4.5 gallons per 100 miles driven with an estimated total driving range of 375 miles. EPA fuel economy figures are 19 miles per gallon city, 20 miles per gallon highway, and 22 miles per gallon combined. Two transmissions were available on the Impala and their fitment was determined by what engine went into the car. Ding ding ding, they're both automatics. In our base car and the up-level LS trim, we have the 4-speed 4T65V Turbo Hydromatic Automatic with our column shift lever. A floor-mounted lever came with the optional center console and bucket seats. On the supercharged SS, it was the 4T65V HD Turbo Hydromatic Automatic. Looking around the rear of the Impala, some heritage design characteristics are present, with the rear window treatment looking similar to BMW's Hoffmeister Kink that pays homage to the 1994-1996 B-body car, and large one-piece taillights with individual red roundels that remind one of the 1960s Impalas. According to the car's designer John Cafaro, we wanted the Impala to not simply be ha a happy, friendly Chevy sedan, we wanted the car to have just a little bit more flair to it, a bit more aggressive styling. Along the profile of the Impala, the lines are somewhat elegant and lead the eye to believe that the car is shorter than it appears. The Impala, regardless of trim, sits on a 110.5 inch wheelbase with an overall length of 200 inches. Steering is hydraulically assisted vehicle speed sensitive variable rate rack and pinion with 2.9 turns lock to lock and a 38 foot turning radius. Wheels are 16 inch black painted steel wheels with silver wheel covers. Tires are 225-60R16 Goodyear Viva All Seasons, and suspension is Chevrolet Soft Ride Suspension with independent front and rear McPherson struts, non-linear springs, and hollow front and solid rear stabilizer bars. Brakes are four-wheel disc brakes with 11.9-inch vented rotors up front and 10.9-inch solid rotors in the rear and are assisted by four-channel ABS. 
They can halt the Impala from 60 miles prior to zero and 130 feet. Up front, regardless of trim, the Impala looks aggressive with a somewhat European flair, at least for this time frame. While the styling is decidedly Chevrolet, the lines are sharp edged and chiseled with clear lens halogen headlamps set in black bezels and a black split grille with a chrome divider strip and the gold bow tie emblem front and center. The base cars did not have fog lights. All right, no smart key access system here, but we do have remote keyless entry. And opening the door reveals a very nicely uh, appointed interior, especially for this price point. As you can see, we do have the bench seats here with the custom cloth. And on the door panels, it is a two-tone vinyl trim. It has a very nice soft touch materials and wood harvested from the plastic forest. Of course, you also have your power equipment buttons there. You also got door molded mat pockets. And this vehicle is equipped with the optional six-way power driver seat with adjustable lumbar support. On the driver's side instrument panel, you do have your headlamp control with panel dim, and you have your trunk release, your hood release, your foot activated parking brake, and a neoprene tilt steering wheel. And taking a quick look at the seats, as you can see here, they are the 60-40 bench seat with the fold down center armrest, the armrest with cup holders and storage. The seats are very comfortable, the cloth is supportive, it's also kind of grippy, and it has a nice two-tone treatment to it. Overall, the interior is basic, but nice. All right, we're gonna pan through the interior and we're gonna show more details. As you can see here, nice fluidic, hydraulically assisted power steering with a pretty unique two-spoke steering wheel. Not a lot of controls here, just cruise controls at the bottom of the steering wheel. Basic instrumentation here, just a fuel level, coolant temperature, and a 120 mile per hour speedometer. Digital readout for the odometer and a message center. And you do have GM's multifunction control lever here with cruise control, wiper controls, and your headlamp and turn signal indicators. Moving over the top of the dash, as you can see, it's all soft touch vinyl, but it has not cracked or split. It's actually held up well over time, especially with a vehicle of this mileage. The original radio has been replaced, and we do have a Kenwood aftermarket sound system. It does feature Bluetooth connectivity and a USB port. You also have an auxiliary input jack and a new... Uh, storage tray underneath it. Here we have standard dual zone climate controls which is a really nice touch. It's not automatic but you do have fan speed and panel distribution to either side of the temperature selectors. Alright, taking a look at the center armrest it does fold up to reveal third seating with a lap belt in the middle. Something that's rarely seen today. As that armrest folds down you'll see you have two cup holders and a nice amount of storage in this padded armrest. Overall, I feel like the interior of the Impala is a very nice and well thought out interior. It's comfortable. It's actually pretty roomy and airy as well. Overhead, we have a manually dimming uh, inside rear view mirror. It does feature the OnStar capability controls. And underneath it, you do have two uh, reading lights mounted to the mirror. And overhead, of course, we have sun visors with illuminated vanity mirrors. And the sun visors do slide out, and they have slide out extensions as well. Overhead, you have overhead assist handles and height adjustable front seat belts. All right, not to be outdone, let's take a look at the rear seat. The rear seat door treatment features the same styling as the front seats. Our seats are the premium cloth, so we have the 60-40 split folding seats. More wood harvested from the plastic forest. You also have a power window switch. Soft touch vinyl trim on all uh, touch points. The rear seat is actually very nice and roomy. It has integrated head restraints for all passenger seating areas. Three point belts for all passenger seating areas. You've also got overhead illumination and coat hooks and grab handles. As stated before, it is a 60-40 split folding seat. It does feature an armrest that folds out. That includes padded armrest and cup holders, a very nice touch. As stated before, you do have overhead reading lights, grab handles, and coat hooks. Folding the seats is easy by pulling these little tethers. It unlocks the seat back from the back of the car to gain access to the trunk area.
There are three ways to open the luggage area. First, you can press the button on the driver's side instrument panel. Next, you can go old school and use the tried and true key in the keyhole method. Or, you can press and hold the trunk release button on the remote transmitter. Whichever way you choose, you'll find that the Impala has a nicely sized trunk area with 18.6 cubic feet of storage capacity. Our car has the optional 60-40 split folding rear seats, and as you can see, it is fully lined, carpeted, and illuminated. At the front, there is a storage net that spans the width of the opening, and on the left-hand side, that plastic box is the OnStar hardware and communications equipment. Under the floor, you'll find a compact spare tire with jack and tools. And this does conclude our in-depth walk-around look at the 2005 Chevrolet Impala. We hope you liked the video, and if you did like it, please, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhoodcarreviews, and our Instagram channel at brinsoj1. And, as, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.